so statements are sort of commands of sorts. They tell they tell it to do something. A, a, an expression, those formulas, they compute values. They don't tell it to, they, they, they're not aimed at directly telling, their job in life is not to tell it to do something typically, it's to tell it to compute something, to calculate something, an expression, a formula. And it computes a value. That's absolutely key, central thing. A statement, by contrast, does something. It affects some changes, it makes a change. What, what might it change? Well, it might change a person's, a person's age. It might change their color. It might change their income level. It might cause them to disappear from the model. They disappear <laughs> um, because they die or what have you. It might cause them to come into being. They're born. These are sort of commands that, that accomplish some task. They perform some job. They tell it, do this, change this, boom, done. Okay? Um, and generally speaking, if you have action code in any logic, that is where you will see statements. Where do we see action code? I argued that just um, a few minutes ago that the most common thing you will see is the need for, ex for expressions, for values that you have to specify. And we we will often specify them by giving an expression, even if it's just a constant. But statements are used a lot in actions. Where have we seen actions? Can anyone tell us? On arrival. On arrival. Beautiful. What else? Where, where else have we seen it? Um, where have we seen actions? Well, let's go down to person here. Where might we go to see an action? The entry action. Remember this? Entry action? Another type of action to which show referred is, for example, if we, if we make a transition, we have an action associated with that. Or that one that we saw yesterday, which had communicable mobility. Here we go. Um, and we, we had these kind of agents bouncing around, and there was this arrival action. Uh, and when it returned into here, it performed this entry action. And in general, any logic is also full of places that you can put code in actions. And the code you put in actions, ladies and gentlemen, as they fit the name, are commands. They're statements. Do this. Make this change. So these actions are filled with statements. And that's why you see plenty of semicolons in them. Say, do this, do that, do that. It's not asking for a value there. It's not, a, it's not saying, give me a value. It's what it's saying is tell me what to do at that point. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so here, if we go and we look, we'll have actions associated with transitions, and we'll have actions associated with states, and we will have, in fact, actions associated with, say, starting up an agent. Or when an agent's about to go away, maybe you want to put its values in the database. When it's on arriving, when it's arriving at a destination, as Cheryl said, um, lots of places we put, we have action handling. A preeminent case, or a case that we see a great deal, which occurred in this hybrid budding model, where we had this event going off. I mean, an event's job in life is to determine when to go off as determined by some expression, for example, expression of a schedule or a condition, and then having gone off, it undertakes an action. That's what it, if it didn't have an action to do, it would be full of sound and fury and signify nothing. It would go off and then nothing would happen. Why would you do that? It, it wouldn't be useful. The job of an act of an eight, of an event is to do something when it goes off. It's triggered, and then something's got to happen. Maybe it writes out to a database. Maybe it puts out a text file of values. Maybe it reports to a spreadsheet. Maybe it outputs something on a histogram. But it does something. So actions are where a lot of statements live in any logic. Okay. Now, what are these statements? What do they look like? In what varieties do they come? Well, 
it may initially seem confusing, but there's not too many types that you have to worry about. And I've simplified it here, but I'm showing you the core set that you would have to, at a practical level, be concerned about as, um, as um, familiar things. Some of them you've already seen. They are simply expressions. They just are expressions followed by a semicolon. Now, these expressions are a very, a very particular sort of expression. It's not any expression. For example, there's no use putting 10 semicolon. I mean, it does nothing. It doesn't change anything, right? If I said 10 semicolon, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. It doesn't change anything. So it's not useful. What is useful if you said something like this? Um, income plus equals 10,000 semicolon. What is this doing? Oh, maybe I'll make it this dot income. It does what? Increases my income by $10,000. I'm sure that would interest some people here. Um, uh, so, especially the grad students. Um, uh, so, this is a statement, and this is an expression. This is an expression here, right? Type of expression. Another one might be, you know, my age, this dot age plus plus. What does that do? It increases my age by one, right? Yeah. So, so those are. Those are statements. The fact that their st statement is is made possible by the fact they end with a semicolon. Hmm? Another time we might say this dot, we'll see this tomorrow, this dot apply network. When we have a dynamic network, someone comes into it and we want to knit them into the network. We'll call this dot apply network and the job of this is not to compute something. It doesn't return a value. What it does is it recomputes the network. It sort of connects people up. That's its job in life, is to do something, accomplish something. And in general, a lot of the expressions in any logic come into two flavors. One type just computes things. It calculates things, and it doesn't change anything. Another type changes things, but it doesn't compute things. It doesn't calculate things. It just makes some change. Doesn't, I mean, what I mean by doesn't calculate anything, it doesn't return something to you. Its job as an express, as a, a method is not to return a value. Its job is just to perform an action. Its job is not to return I, its job is just to do and die. Um, that's, the, that's the value of, 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 of that. Uh, that expression. It just does its job, it doesn't return anything. Okay. Um, yes? This is not returning anything. Do you have to select not returning a value? Like, uh, I seem to remember that yeah, yeah. it returns a value or it doesn't return a value. Yeah, yeah. You, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and um, we, we, we say that it returns a value of type void is what it's called. We'll probably see this tomorrow. If you have a method, if you have a function that you don't want to return anything, if it returns a double precision value, we'll say it returns a double. If, you, if it returns an integer, we'll say it returns an int. If it returns a string, it returns a string. If it returns a reference to a, a reference to a string, it returns a string. If it returns a reference to a person, it returns a person. That's what we say. If it returns nothing, we say it returns void. And in any logic, when you add in a method, and you will see this tomorrow, um, when you add in a method, here, let's go to the palette, and let's go add in a method. There's a function. Sorry, I'll call it a function. It is also a method. We'll call it my function. Um, maybe it returns uh, is. Uh, it returns um, uh, total population uh, size or something like that. Um, uh, in any case, you could see it, it. We have to classify: does it return a value? If so, what type? Otherwise, is it just an action? And and in many cases, it'll be just an action. That's what we call returning void. It just doesn't return anything. Of, you don't select returns nothing, and you put in an action that doesn't return anything, so it just goes automatically. I mean, 
it, it'll be unhappy. It'll be it'll be unhappy. It will be um, it will say you need to return something. Yeah, okay. it'll complain. Um, that's in contrast to earlier languages. Uh, some earlier languages would it, where it wouldn't know to complain. Okay. Um, okay. So some common Java statements. There's an if statement, for statements, while we've seen some of these. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about if statements first. So an if statement it'll test some condition. Maybe the condition is, is my income less than $400 implicitly per month? Is it greater than a certain level? If so, do one thing, otherwise do another. These are statements, ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're not, their job in life is not to return a value. Their job in life is to do something. And so this if condition, if this is true, it does something. Otherwise, it does something different. Or it's just of this form. It does, there's no else. It just, if this condition, do this. If I'm older than 99, um, I disappear from the population. Um, so this is this is a predicate. This is something that returns that that evaluates the true or false. It's an expression. It's a value that it, it calculates the value that's either true or false. If it's true, it does the consequent. Otherwise, it does the alternative. Is that helpful? Okay. Um, uh, so this is an if statement. Now I want to contrast this with the with the ternary expression earlier, which would say something like um, if uh, something like if if uh, this dot sex. So so this this if statement might be if this dot sex equals equals male then then you know um I don't know what, what to do here. Um um you know uh uh then uh no, whatever. Yeah yeah okay uh, okay this this dot income this dot income Plus equals, you know, um, a um, else this dot income plus equals I don't know what uh, two two times a or something if all thing right um, um, three mon ah uh, so um, here males are going to have a an increase of their income. Women will have an increase of income by A. Women will have an increase of income of two times A. Okay? Yeah? Okay, now, that's, that's a statement. Now, if I wanted to ask, okay, um, uh, I want to say, okay, um, I, I want to have an expression. So I could say, you know, if this dot sex equals male, I want to return, I want to, Evaluate. This is going to be an expression. It's just testing. Is this true? If so, say um, m. Otherwise, it re it gives the value. Otherwise, it gives the value um, uh, f or something like that. That would just. This is evaluating. This is a, a semicolon. I mean, sorry, a colon. And this evaluates to either m or f depending on whether it's male. This is, this is an expression. It calculates a value. And being clear about that is really useful on any logic because most of the places it's asking for a value. So you put an expression. There are no semicolons here. It is bereft of semicolons. By contrast, this has to have semicolons. There's a command. Do this. There's statements. Here, there's no semicolon. So if you can figure out from a given thing, is it looking for a value? If so, use an expression and it does not need semicolons. If it's looking, being told what to do like an action, it needs semicolons to do its job. Okay, that's a very important, so, but these are two different things. This is, they're, they're both doing different things based on a condition, but this is returning different values based on a condition. This is doing, undertaking different commands based on a condition. Okay, um, so time is a creeping. Um, let's talk about four statements. Four statements iterate. They loop through successfully. And we've seen this several times. Now, start i at zero. It asks, 
Is this thing true? If so, it'll undertake the statement, and then it will undertake this this uh, statement there. It'll perform that change. Okay. Um, so this is iterate. So it'll start at zero. Is this less than that? Yes. Do the statement. It'll i plus plus. What will i become? I was zero. What will it now be after this is completed? One. Then we'll go back. It'll say, is this less than 100? If so, do this. Now increase it. I goes from 1 to what? 2. Okay. It'll ask, is this less than 100? If so, do this. So in short, it will execute this 100 times. I will have to value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 99 in evaluating this. And after the 99th, it will increment it and will say, is 100 less than 100? No. It will fall through. Done. So we'll perform this 100 times. Right? Another form of this, which is even more common for you, is to loop through a population, for example. Loop through a connection. And this could be an agent, or you could say person A in the population do this thing. Okay? So maybe I want to, you know, go and periodically print out the age of everyone in the population, or the infection status, or the income. What the heck? Let me just do it. Okay. Um, here, let's go do it. Ready? Are you ready? Okay. I, it, it, uh, first of all, let's go, let's go do it here. This is this crowding disparity. Watch this. Um, so let's make sure it's a happy camper. I even screwed it up. Okay. Watch this. I'm going to have this thing periodically go through and print out everyone's, uh, number of connections. Um, so here's an event, and I'm going to say reporting, reporting event, and it's going to go off um, periodically, cyclic, every, um, say, one week, you know, every one week, and it will go through everyone in the population, and it will print out, um, print out the number of connections and their status. Uh, so for person P, it's going to call each person in the population intern P in the population. Hmm? Now I'm going to print out um, so I'm going to print out the name of P and then I'm going to say has P dot get connections number connections oh this would be a beautiful content do it okay and is um and is oh watch this oh yeah well i, yeah, I have mixed feelings about this but let's give it a try um p dot in in state in state, we're going to ask, is it in the infected state? Person dot, hey, come on. Person dot infected, infective, yeah. Are they infective? If so, we will say is, we'll, we'll not say anything. Otherwise, we will say not and and then we will say infect him. Okay, maybe that's a multiple. Um, and I apologize if it is, um, but this is a loop. Let's go see it on the big screen. Hey, come on, um, don't give me that. Uh, boom, okay. Come on. Okay, um, hey, come on. Um, sorry, it's, being, it's exhibiting truculence. Does a computer ever exhibit truculence to yourself? Um, boom, there we are. Okay, so this is what it is. I'm going to word wrap this. I'm going to put it down so you could see what's here. Okay, um, so every time I concatenate something, I'll put it here. You can do this in Java with no problem. It just, it just looks for the end after the semicolon. There we go. Um, so this is, is what's there. So, so what's matching up with what? This paren is matching up with that paren. Um, so what is this printing out? Anyone? What is it saying? It, this is the person's name, person zero, person one, person two. 
in the population has this many connections. To really do this nicely, um, we, we do this a lot in software engineering, prettifying things. So really, you should do something like that. Okay. So this has has this many connections, this many connections, and is. And what is this going to evaluate to? If the person's infective, this is going to be an empty string. It's not going to be doing anything. If the person's not infective, it'll be not infective. So it's going to go through and it's going to report everyone's connections and whether or not they're infected. Does that make sense? Should we give it a run? What do you think? Okay, watch watch this. By the way, who is T here? P is each person in the population. It's going to be doing this for person, first person in the population doing this, second person in the population doing this. With each time that person is being called P. Person zero called P. Next person called P. Next person called P. Okay, ready? You ready to roll? Okay, let's try it. Um, here we go. Okay, it's going along. Look at that. Okay, it's coming along. Um, okay, it's it's uh, it's only up to time there. It's going to do another whole batch of them. I think uh, pretty uh, at the at the two week two week time. So in short, it it goes through the connection and updates it periodically. Updates it just looping through. The, does that make sense for a loop? Okay, so that's that's a, a loop of that sort, a loop over a population. You notice mine was person P in the connection. It was just this is just the name you want to use for each person successively. So I showed you yesterday when I was giving that bit of an introduction to any logic. I showed you how actually these these um, statistics. And I'm watching the time here, so you can get outside. But watch this. If you go look at the statistics, ladies and gentlemen, here's the statistic. It's going to take the max of the income, right? Watch this. Well, okay, this one will be easier. Let's do the, the count of the income. Here we go, right? Count high SES. Watch this. Boom. There it is. Here's your for loop. It's going over each person in the population and calling them what? Item. You ever wonder where item comes from? It's from right there. That's where item comes from. And then it's seeing does items income. Who wrote this? You did. We all did, right? Seeing if that, and if so, it's setting that equal to be a variable called T. That's its, that's, that's the, the name for what this returns. It's either true or false, right? And if it's true, it does what? It adds one to the value. In other words, this is the count of people for whom this is true. So if it goes and it finds the first person, it'll add it and count one person. Maybe the second person, this is not true, so it doesn't it doesn't do this and it continues through. The third person, now it is true. So this value just holds the count of people so far, the running count. And when it's done, it returns value. Done. Do you understand that now? Well, any logic did. This is any logic's code. This is any logic code. And this is a variable. Remember, variables hold what? They hold values. And this is the value it holds, whatever it's returned by this. It's either true or false. Any logic did all that. I didn't do all of that. I'm just saying that based on the knowledge from this session, you should be able to actually go look. If, if I mean, I almost never do that, but if you ever wanted to go look at, you know, what's going on behind the scenes and demystify some of the things that are happening, you can do that without fear. Here's here's the maximum. I could go and I look, look, this is how it determines the maximum. It goes through and it says, okay, the maximum be negative infinity. It goes through each person population and say, is, the per is that person's value greater than the maximum? If so, set the maximum to that value. Just goes through the population, returns max. Done. Pretty straightforward, right? And this is just a loop through the population, calling each person in turn what? Item. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's a for statement. If statement, um, 
sometimes we string together ifs just like this. If this, else if that, else if that. Eh? Um, okay. Um, right. Um, okay, so while loop. There's also a thing called the while loop. It executes statements as long as the condition is true. And there's a variant of it called, called do while that has to test instead of at the beginning, at the end. So, so for example, you might, oh, okay, I'm not quite sure what, what, what happened, what happened there. Okay, um, okay, uh, sorry, um, okay, um, weird thing happened, weird, weirdness. Okay, um, so here's a while, for example, do this while this thing is true. It does it once, tests if it's true. If not, it goes, continues on. Otherwise, it goes back, or you can have the while at the top. And I don't know that I have a nice example of that, but the while at the top. While my age is less than 100, do this set of things, and then increment it. Um, so it, it allows us to do a set of statements until a certain condition is false, in which case we finish. That's a while. It's a little bit like a for, except we, we're not incrementing, some, we're, we're not going necessarily over some components. There's a thing called the switch statement which are kind of a little bit like a multi-way if statement. It can handle many cases. So for example, we ask, what's this network file type? Is it PIEC file? Is it a connectivity matrix or is it something else? So suppose we have 10 different possibilities. You're in age zero to four, five to nine, you know, 10 to 14, uh, and, and uh, 14 to, to 19, and 20 to 24, and then anything over 24 something like that, you might handle each of those cases differently, do something different for them. And so you can do a switch on this and, and have a case for each of those cases. And it will handle a specific case. Maybe, maybe what you have is six different ethnicities in your model and you want to draw data for each of those ethnicities from a different data source. A switch will allow you to do that, switch in case. You'll have a case for each ethnicity and then a default case where you, you catch anything that doesn't fall in those and you say, I don't know what this is. You know, there must be some mistake. It's like a series of ifs and elses, which is particularly compact. And, uh, and you don't have to kind of say else, else if this, else if that, else if that. It's kind of, it's compact. And it turns out that you got to put in these breaks here to tell it not to fall through, which is really a silly thing, but that's that's the fate that that's what fate has handed us. So these breaks tell it to stop here instead of falling through to the next one. There are cases where people like to fall through and do sort of do what's down here, but in general we have breaks here that have each of them handled separately. So that's a a case statement. Um, in general. We could take a bunch of statements and put them in curly brackets and and do them all at once. So um, so uh, we can declare, and then we can declare variables inside of them, for example. Um, so we might have something like this. We might have an if statement. Um, okay, that's not a good case. Here's an if statement, big F, and it has curly bracket here. You can't see that it's a curly one, but it is. And, and inside of this, we can have a whole bunch of statements, a whole bunch of statements. Okay, you guys, um, I think, have got to go. We'll cover this, uh, the rest of this stuff tomorrow, but there's just one or two other statement types I was going to show. Okay? So I think the bus is um, due pretty soon here. Um, yeah, another another uh, four or five minutes. So I hope that's useful, um, and we'll continue tomorrow. Made some good progress today, and I'm happy to answer questions.